keep God's commandments and you will live in his love. All of us being begotten sons of God will bring real peace on earth and real peace with God. Bless Koresh and his followers. Here I am. Send me. The perfect love is come. Now there is no need to prophesy or have something partly revealed. Now that you see him face to face, you know whether he knows you. If you're a son, he does. If you are a son, you know God loves you. What I'm doing will prosper because I am that tree. This tree will not blow away as the shaft of the wheat does. Those that stand in judgment are counted as worthy if they are made righteous by Jesus. You are now either righteous by Jesus or a sinner. A begotten Son of God is godly the ungodly shall perish. God doesn't want any to perish because that means one of his sons refused to admit it. The people that refuse to admit they are a son don't love that truth love wickedness. By me being the only and first one to say we are all begotten sons has brought a fire that this world has never seen. The brightness of this fire is the true light. Search your soul and you will see, if you're not blind, that we are all begotten sons. Jesus Christ is not our adopted brother, but our real brother. We are cursed now by saying we are not begotten sons of God. The final part of salvation plan is for all at the same time to admit and believe the truth that we are the sons of God and that we owe our very lives and existence to our Heavenly Father in Heaven. When we admit we are sons, it changes everything. We have a whole different set of principles to live by. We are no longer blind to see. We serve God, not man. We live for eternity and not for just the now. 
we have true family love for others we are no longer perishing we work together instead of against each other there is no feelings of sorrow pain and death the endless search is over there is no crying like the lost child you're back home where there is love and joy that is why the land was cursed because of Adam so we would realize just how hard it is without God and the help he gives his sons the curse in the last line of the Old Testament is an everlasting curse to the earth if we do not believe the truth that we are all begotten sons of God because we will all become begotten sons of the devil forever since I am who I am and being the first begotten son of God you won't believe me why would God want to waste his time anymore on you Every believer of God has to admit they are a begotten son of God or order to lift the curse. It is not enough if only a few believe because they won't last long enough because they will have to take the mark of the beast just to keep living from having to eat and work. This is our one chance to establish the kingdom of God on this earth. There will never be another. Once the curse is lifted, it will never return. The curse is never to be able to live in the Garden of Eden, which we were banished from 6,000 years ago by thinking that we are not the sons of God. The next curse will be an everlasting curse, and then there will never be a garden or kingdom of God on earth. It will be eternal banishment. The curse will enter the home of all who try to steal the kingdom from us by saying what I proclaim is false. I do not swear falsely by God's name. I tell the truth. Now, let's see if you swear falsely or if you tell the truth you will be banished from the kingdom for unbelieving by saying you do not believe is trying to steal God's glory you will be banished to the house of the devil which is being destroyed all of the house is being destroyed both its timber and its stones by the curse to those that do not believe that we are the begotten sons of God and that this is the coming of the house of God 